Hey everyone, today we are going to answer the question, how do I multiply positive and negative decimals? So multiplying decimals are gonna follow the same rules as multiplying integers for the signs. So if the signs are the same, then the answer is positive. And if the signs are different, then the answer is negative. And this Mickey Mouse right here can help you remember the rules for multiplying integers. If you cover up the two signs of your numbers and the remaining sign will tell you the sign of your answer. So say you are multiplying a positive and a negative, you would cover those up. That means that your answer is negative. If you are multiplying a negative times a negative, then the positive remains. So if you multiply the same signs, then it's a positive answer. If you multiply different signs, then it's a negative answer. So that's with the signs. Now let's talk about multiplying the decimals. So multiplying decimals is the same as multiplying whole numbers. The only difference is that we will need to place a decimal point in the product or the answers. So here are the steps. We're gonna multiply the numbers as if they were the whole numbers. We are not going to line up the decimals. We won't even put decimals in there whenever we are multiplying we will place the decimal in our product. We're gonna do this by counting the total number of places to the right of the decimal in both of the numbers. And then in our product or answer, we will start from the right or the end of the number and we will move the total number of places that we found in step two to the left and put a decimal point. So say you counted three decimal places in step two, then that's how many you would move to the left in step three. And then we will figure out the sign of the product using our integer rules. So let's start with number one. I have a negative times a negative, so that means my answer is going to be positive. And then I have one, two decimal points in total. So in my final answer, I will move two decimal points and my answer will be positive. Now I'm going to multiply these two numbers as if they were whole numbers. So I'm gonna do 264 times 31. I'm just writing these as if they were whole numbers. So one times four is four, one times six is six, one times two is two. I'm gonna add a zero and then three times four is 12, six times three is 18. So I'll add one and I get 19. And then three times two is six plus one is seven. And I'm gonna add these and I get four, six plus two is eight, nine plus two is 11, and one plus seven is eight. So here's what I got from multiplying the numbers. It is positive since we had a negative times a negative and I'm gonna move the decimal to the left two times since I had two decimal points in total from the original numbers. So the final answer is 81.84. Okay, let's look at number two. I have negative seven times 3.3. .3. So I have a negative times a positive. So that means that the final answer or product will be negative. And then I just have one decimal point here. So I will just have to move my decimal point to the left one time when I get my final answer. And now I'm gonna multiply these like whole numbers. So I'm gonna do 33 times seven. So seven times three is 21, seven times three is 21 plus two is 23. And then this was negative since we had a negative times a positive and I'm gonna move the decimal to the left once. So the final answer is negative 23.1. Okay, number three, I have 73.9 times 0.75. So I have a positive times a positive, so my final answer will be positive. And I have one, two, three decimal points in total. Okay, so now I'm gonna multiply these like they're whole numbers. So I'm gonna do seven, three, nine times 75. So five times nine is 45. I'm gonna carry the four. Five times three is 15 plus four is 19. Seven times five is 35 plus one is 36. Okay, now I'm gonna multiply the seven. Seven times nine is 63. 
7 times 3 is 21 plus 6 is 27. And then 7 times 7 is 49 plus 2 is 51. Okay, now I'm going to add these together. 5 plus 0 is 5. 9 plus 3 is 12. We'll carry the 1. 7 plus 6 is 13 plus 1 is 14. 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 1 is 5. And then we'll bring down the 5. And then my final answer was positive since I had a positive times a positive and I have to move the decimal 3 to the left. So I move one, two, three. So the final answer is positive 55.425. All right, let's look at number four. I have a negative number times a positive number. So those are two different signs. So my final product will be negative. And then let's count the decimal places. I have one, two, three, four in total. So at the end, I will have to move my decimal four spaces. So now let's multiply these like they're whole numbers. I'm going to do 3092 times 8.1. So 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 9 is 9, 1 times 0 is 0, and 1 times 3 is 3. Now let's do 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 9 is 72, plus 1 is 73. 8 times 0 is 0, plus 7 is 7. And then 8 times 3 is 24. Okay, now let's add these together. 2 plus 0 is 2, 9 plus 6 is 15. 1 plus 0 is 1, plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 7 is 10, 1 plus 4 is 5, and bring down the 2. So there is the numbers in our final answer. We just need to make it a negative since I had a negative times a positive, and then I need to move the decimal to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I get negative 25.0425 or 4. Five, two. All right, number five, I have a negative times a negative, so I'm going to get a positive answer. And then I'll have to move the final decimal two spaces since there are two decimals in the original numbers. Now let's multiply them like they're whole numbers, 234 times one is just gonna be 234. We talked about how this is a positive number since I did a negative times a negative, and I'm going to move the decimal to the left two times. So I get positive 2.34 as the final answer. Okay, number six, I have a positive times a negative, so my final product will be negative and then I will need to move the decimal in my final answer, one, two, to the left, since that's how many decimal places are in the original numbers. And now if I write these as whole numbers, it's just gonna be six times eight, which is 48. And we know it was negative, and then I'll move the decimal to the left, one, two. So the final answer here will be negative 0.48. All right, let's look at number seven. It says the length of a board is 7.5 feet and the width is 3.25 feet. What is the area of the board? So we know to find the area of a rectangle, which the board is the shape of an area or of a rectangle, we do length times width. So we'll just have to multiply these two numbers together. So it's gonna end up being a positive answer since I have a positive times a positive. And then I will have to move my final decimal one, two, three times. And now I'm gonna multiply these like they're whole numbers. So I'm gonna do 325 times 75. So five times five is 25. Five times two is 10 plus two is 12. Five times three is 15 plus one is 16. 
Okay, 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 2 is 14, and 14 plus 3 is 17. And then 3 times 7 is 21, plus 1 is 22. And now we'll add these together. 5 plus 0 is 5, 2 plus 5 is 7, 6 plus 7 is 13, 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4, and I bring down the 2. And then I have to move my decimal to the left 3 times. One, two, three. So the area of the board is 24.375 feet squared. Number eight, it says Jessica babysat for seven hours. If she earned $12.50 per hour, what is the total amount of money that she made? So we will just take her hourly rate, $12.50, and we'll multiply it by the number of hours she worked, which was seven, and that will tell us how much money she made. So our final answer will be positive since we have a positive times a positive, and I'll move the decimal two spaces. So now let's multiply 1, 2, 5, 0 times 7. So 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 2 is 14 plus 3 is 17. And then 1 times 7 is 7 plus 1 is 8. And then I move the decimal 2 times. So the total that she made for seven hours of babysitting was $87.50.